can, brethren, can you turn your Bibles to Romans 8, 26? That is Romans 8, 26. We'll be reading from, we will go to 26 to 28. I'll actually stand one more time as we read the word of God. One more time, that's Romans 8, 26. If you have to say amen. 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 Likewise, and the word of God says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself making intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. 28 and last, for we know that all things work together for good, for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. This is the word of God. Be seated if you can. As we look at the text, the text is offering reassuring words. Reassuring words to the people of God. There are times that the people of God are weak, not just physically weak, or mentally weak, or spiritually weak. There are times when you cannot muster up the courage to even pray for yourself. The pain in life is so great, so severe, so stressful, you find yourself unable to mouth or form the words to pray unto God. You can't even mouth the words and say, Jesus, Lord have mercy. Amen. But the Lord, but God is the Spirit. And the word says the Spirit itself is making intercessions for us. He's interceding on our behalf according to the will of God. Amen. He understands your aches, your moans, your groans, the pain that you're going through. He said tears are even a language. That God understands. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. He is a God that understands the need of his people. The word of God says in Philippians 4, verse 19, but God shall supply all your needs according to the riches and glory, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus. Yes. And if it aligns with the plan of Jesus, God will grant it unto us. Amen. All we have to do is pray. And look to him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen? Yes. But I'd like to turn your attention to verse 28 one more time. That's where my topic will be taken from. That is verse 28. One more time for emphasis. I'm going to reread it one more time for emphasis. And we know that all things work together for the good, good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Brethren, the topic of this message, message is called, It's Working. It's working. Let's do this for a second. It's working. It's working. Not too high above your head to call you crazy, but just run it down here. It's working. All things are working, whether good or bad. All things, whether sickness, health, Riches, poverty, whatever the circumstance is working on the behalf of God's people. Amen. 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 The people of God who love God and are called according to his purpose. We could look at life as a puzzle. All the pieces are all over the place and they don't seem to fit right away. But over time, little by little, you could fit the pieces as they fall into place. That is God working in our life. At times we are gracefully broken, gracefully broken. And even when the things don't seem like it's working out, God is putting pieces together in our life. He's so intricate and he has perfect timing that he can fit and join the pieces 
together as it fits properly in our life. And from gracefully broken, we can go from mercy, mercifully fixed. I said from mercifully broken, we can go from mercifully fixed. The song says, your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to, you gotta study on it, you gotta, I, 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 you gotta, you gotta feel it, you gotta, I, I, I wanna thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy brought me through. There's some people in the crowd today that only by God's grace, you are still here. Hallelujah. It's only by the work of God that you're sitting in the seat today. There were times when you didn't think you could make it. Death was on every side. The outcome was too great to overcome. You turned to look for help, but no friends were there to lend you a helping hand. But I know a friend. I know a friend that sticks closer than a brother. A friend that could lift a heavy burden, that could be touched with the feelings of our affirmities. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And I name him. His name is Jesus. Wonderful counsel, Prince of Peace, Mighty God. Jesus. And he is here to help you. Even when things don't look like they're working out, he still finds favor for his people. He is working behind the scenes. He's working it out for your good. It's working. Hallelujah. As you look at the screen, you see two gears. And one gear is the peon gear, the small one. And then the larger gear is called a gear. That's a gear gear. And you know, technology is so advanced. I know pastors like technology. It's, it's changing. It's become so advanced, as I said. Mostly all machines have gears. I don't want to be incorrect, but for the most part, not all get all machines, some phones are gearless, um, cameras, but for the most part, most machines carry a gear. They are used in everyday machines such as cars, vac vacuums, oil rigs, oil rigs, blenders, washing machines. They're used in everyday life. The function of the gear is to transmit Rotary motion, yeah. as you see. Yeah. Yeah. From one, to transfer power from one shaft to another. And they're great. But this is the creation of man. Sometimes they will malfunction yeah. and stop working. Yeah. But it pales in comparison to the creation of God. I said it pales in comparison to the creation of God, which is working around the clock. Somebody say hallelujah. As we look, if you could turn your attention to the scripture reading, which was Psalms 8. It's David talking about the creation of God in his own words. He's illustrating the creation of the Lord and the great and wonderful things that he is doing and continues to do in life. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. It's so powerful, you have to say it twice at verse 9. It's the book end of the chapter, the beginning and the end. The Lord is excellent. The Lord is wonderful. He is a miracle worker. He's a problem solver. He's the light in the darkness. Of course he is. He's the creator of the world. Even in machines and man-made things, you see God. 
it's through those things. It was through God that gave the wisdom to man to build these devices. If you don't believe me, ask no. Take my time. God instructed Noah to prepare the ark for rain. He didn't even see. He didn't know what rain was. So how would he know what to build? But God, in His infinite wisdom, gave Noah the blueprints, the dimensions of the ark, the cubits, and how to design it. And when it was completed, Noah and his family and two animals of every kind went inside the ark. And it rained. And it rained. And it rained some more. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. The windows of heaven were open and nonstop rain came down on the world. The power of God. But despite that, Noah and the people and the occupants, the animals, were saved. Yeah. There was no malfunctions. There was no leaks in the ark. There was no test drive. They didn't go out. God sent the rain. It didn't work. It came back. No, it was one straight cruise. It was perfect, as someone said. It was intact. It was working. Just a small fraction of God's almighty knowledge and power. I wish I could word it, but I'll be here all day and all night to tell you how excellent God is. Amen. His glory cannot be contained. It, sa it says his glory is above the heavens, Amen. which is multiple heavens. Amen. Not just the one in space, but there's a level beyond that. Amen. Heavens, you can't contain the glory, the power of God. Like I said, if you were at the beach and you look out into the ocean and you see the sky and the water, the horizon meet, the clouds, the sea, the ocean, everything, it's an absolutely beautiful view. This is the creation of God. There's a small fraction. There's more in the world. It's the work of God. God, men cannot create these things. The seasons, the elements. This is truly the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And God is above it all. He also extends his grace, his strength, in verse 2. To the bathed and sucklings has thou ordained straight strength because of thy enemies that thou mightiest still the enemy and avenge you. That means to silence the enemy. Children are a blessing, Amen. truly a gift from God. As you watch a child grow from not able to fend for itself, not even talk, but to grow strong to the men and women of tomorrow, as you see behind me. The strength of the Lord can even be found in babies that when they grow up, they could be used as a powerful instrument for God. Amen. Once again, if you don't believe me, ask Moses. Moses was an infant when the Egyptians came around and started killing off the Israelites. But Moses' mother wanted to save him placed them in a basket full of bushels, dabbed it with slime and pitch, and laid the basket on the river bank. He was later discovered by Pharaoh's daughter, and in the twist of fate, she, Moses' mother, was the one to nurse him. She just wanted to preserve life of Moses, but who would know the outcome that Moses would be the key, the vessel to deliver the Israelites from bondage. It was the work of the Lord. It's working. Follow me. It's a long story, but I have to cut it up for time. But the climax was 
before Pharaoh let the, the Israelites go. But he had a change of heart and his, sent his army, which consists of 600 chariots and a captain, a captain over each and every one of them. And they made chase after the Israelites. I could hear the people panic as they looked back and saw the Egyptians charging towards them. But I remember Moses saying, stand still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The enemy you see today, you will see them no more. I said, God will fight your battles. He will make a way out of no way. Trust God. He's working. He's working. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. And Moses stretched forth his rod and parted the waters. And the Egyptians.